Okay, so Alrenthia, we're in your Windows desktop app version of Teams, and in the Teams section, and there's no Teams. That's right. There's no Teams in my Teams. So how do I get Teams in my Teams? So if you want to add Teams into your Teams, um, what do you imagine you'd click on there to add Teams? Would I click on Create Team? Well, you have a couple of choices. You can certainly do that. You also see you have the option to join a team with a code. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But also notice down in the bottom left in the white pane where it says join or create a team. You could also click there. In fact, go ahead and do that. It's actually going to come to the same page that we're on now. Okay. But if you ever wanted to get back to this page, like once your Teams is open and you have lots of Teams, this is how you'd get back to this screen. So it takes you to the same screen we're on. Go ahead and choose Create Team. Let me walk you through how to create a team. When we originally filmed this course, Alrenthi and I went through all the steps to create a new private team called Awesome Video Project. But right after we finished, Microsoft completely changed the way that you create a team inside Teams. So I want to take a minute and show you the new interface, the new changes, and also talk about why they did it because it's important. So I'm here in the Teams web app, and I'm going to get started by clicking on Join or Create Team down here at the bottom of my Teams list. If you're using the desktop app or the mobile app, your buttons may be in different places, but they do the same thing. So to create a new team, I'm going to click on Create a Team. And now I have this new choice, Build a Team from Scratch or Create a Team from an existing Office 365 group or team. I'm going to talk about the Create From in a little bit. Let's talk about Build a Team from Scratch first. So if I click on this, you can see we have three choices for building a team from scratch. Private, public, and org-wide. Now when I filmed this with Alrenthia, all we had was private and public. Private basically means this is a team where the owners decide who the members are going to be, either because the owners add the members or the members request to join and the owner approves it. A public team means that anybody can join the team anytime. Uh, it's open to anybody within the organization. Now, private teams are still visible to the organization, meaning that if you search for a team, you'll find the name of a private team, but you won't be able to see what's inside it. With a public team, you can search and find that team, and you can see all the contents inside it. So that's kind of the choice you would normally make when choosing those two teams. It's very common in a lot of organizations that they want to create a public team that includes all the members, all the employees, all the staff, all the contractors, all the users, in your Office 365 environment, you want to be part of that team. And that's why we have this new option called org-wide. Org-wide is a special type of public team where all of the users in your Office 365 environment are automatically added as members, which is really nice because it used to be that if you wanted a team with all of your employees as members, somebody in your administration staff had to remember that every time an employee gets hired, or added to your Office 365 environment, somebody had to go to that team and add the employee to that team. Now, if you add the team as an org-wide team, they're automatically added. Now, we're going to go back to the video of me and Alrenthia adding a private team in just a minute. But first, I'm going to talk about that other new option. Let me click on Back here, and let's look at the Create From option. So sometimes you're creating a team that's really similar to an existing team. Uh, for example, maybe you have a, a, an annual event at your company, maybe a trade show or a company picnic, and one year you do it and you add all the right people to that team and you create the right structure in terms of the channels and the apps and the tabs that you want to have to let that team really collaborate and it works really well. And then the next year, the next year's event rolls around, you'd like to reuse all of that same structure without having to reinvent the wheel and go set all that stuff up again. Now we have this new option to create a new team from an existing team. Let's look at how that works. If I click on Team, I'm going to see a list of all my existing teams. And I can choose one of those. Let's say I want to make a new team similar to my video production team. When I choose that, I get the option to give it a new name, a new description, and then I get to choose what I'm copying over. So I can copy over the channel structure, the tab structure, the team settings, uh, the apps, and the team members. So, and all this is customizable. So if you want to just copy over the members and not the rest of it, you would just check members and uncheck the rest. Totally up to you. That's a great new feature that Microsoft's added. But let's go back and talk about the groups option. So let's talk about this Office 365 groups option. If you're not familiar with groups, we have a whole other course on groups, but all you need to know is that it's a much simpler collaboration environment. 
uh, where users can uh, share a conversation, share files, share a calendar. It's kind of a, a simpler version of Teams, except that Groups has a calendar, which is something that Teams doesn't have, and Groups lives inside Outlook rather than being a separate app. It's also important to know that Teams is actually built on Groups. So behind the scenes, Teams is using the features of Groups to store the conversations and to manage the members that you have inside Teams. In earlier versions of Teams, every time you created a team, it created an Office 365 group. And that meant that if you're using Outlook, you can go into Outlook and go into your group section, and for every team you had created, you would also see a group. And you'd be able to access some of the team files and a, a different conversation, and you'd have a calendar there you could get to. But most people didn't use those features. Really, you're either using Teams or you're using Groups most of the time. And because it's entirely likely your organization is going to create lots and lots and lots of teams, it got to be a problem where you had this big list of groups uh, that represented teams taking up space in your Outlook that really nobody was using. So what Microsoft has done is this. Now when you create a team, it still creates a group, but the group is hidden by default. There is a way your administrators can go in and change that, but generally it's going to be hidden which means for most people, it's fine. You don't need to know anything about it. You create a team and you're fine. But there's two situations where knowing about groups is helpful. One is if you are in that situation where you do want to use the benefits of groups and teams, especially if you want to have teams, but you also want to have a calendar for your team because you can get a calendar from groups and use that. Uh, in some cases, you might want to do that. Another situation is maybe your organization or maybe your group has been using Office 365 groups for a while and now you want to upgrade. You want to switch over to using Microsoft Teams. In either one of these situations, you can use this Create From Groups option. So if you're using an existing Office 365 group and you want to switch over to Teams, well, that's pretty obvious. You can choose this, browse around and find your Office 365 group and create a team based on that. And all of the members of that group and all the files associated with that group will land in your new team. Otherwise, if you're starting from scratch, what you'll want to do is actually go to Outlook, create a new group first, then come back here and create your team from the Office 365 group that you just created. So now that we've covered some of the new features, let's jump back and help Alrenthia set up her new private team called Awesome Video Project. Okay, and then choose Next. So our team is created, but a team of one is not a very useful team. Although I do know some people that will create a team just for themselves to have a place to put things, and that's okay too. But we really want to have other people to work with. So let's add some members to our video project. Why don't you add me? So go ahead and start typing my name, C-H-I-P. And notice that as you're typing, it's searching the company directory and finding people that match the name. I'm the second one on there, so go ahead and click on the second one and choose Add. Now notice that when it added me, there's a couple of other things I can do on that line. I have that drop down where it says Member. Go ahead and click on that and you'll see I can also be an owner. In this case, it's okay to leave me as member. We'll talk about the difference between members and owners in just a minute. If you made a mistake and didn't mean to add this person, that X on the end of the line would also take them away. Okay. But in this case, it's okay. I can be part of the group. So let's leave it with just you and me for now and click on Close. And just like that, you've created your first team. So we have our awesome video project team. Um, by default, every team has one channel called General, and that's the channel that we're in now. And every channel starts off with Conversations, Files, and Wiki at the top of the channel. So you can see those there. Conversations is where we'll have conversations. Okay. Files is where all of our uh, files will appear, whether we upload them directly or whether we include them in conversations. And Wiki is kind of a special case we'll talk about later. Notice we can also use the plus sign to add additional tabs, and we'll talk about that some more later too.